Hello everyone and welcome again. So continuing our discussion about the orthopedics trauma basic principles class. Now we are go going to talk about the fracture displacement patterns. Now this is a re-recording of this video because the, previ the previous version contained not enough information about the fracture description topic and I consider this topic to be very important so I try to cover it more in this re-recording. So anyways, we mentioned in the, in the beginning of this class the types of fractures and we mentioned that we have different types of fractures according to many different factors. One of those factors was uh, displacement and we mentioned that we have undisplaced fractures and displaced fractures and the displaced fractures have different displacement patterns that we will be discussed in this video. So we will talk about the displaced fractures, the fracture description as I mentioned, and we will talk about the displacement patterns in form of translation, angulation, rotation, shortening, and lengthening. And all are going to be in this video. So let's start. So first, what we mean by displaced fracture? In displaced fracture, the bone fragments are not in its normal anatomical position, meaning the fracturing force and other factors led to the bone fragments being not in their normal anatomical position and that's why we call it displaced fracture. And that is because of many factors including the force applied to the bone. So the force that applied to the bone and led to the fracture is also led to displacement of the bone fragments of the fracture and also the muscle action on the fractured fragments because sometimes there is a fracture fragments that are attached to muscles through tendons. So those would be pulled by the muscle and subsequently will be displaced. And also the gravity, because with the gravity, it pulls down the fracture fragment downward and will lead to displacement. And now let's talk about the fracture description. So it is very important to learn how to describe fractures so you can communicate your findings with the other team members that you are working with and with your seniors. So first you mention the shape of the fracture and we have many shapes including transverse, spiral, oblique, comminuted and segmental fractures. And after that you mention the fracture location you describe it according to the location of the bone. So in long bones, we might have a head, neck, shaft, condyle, or we can use the other uh, names, which is the epiphysis, metaphysis, diaphysis. The epiphysis, metaphysis, diaphysis are more used in pediatric, uh, pediatric fractures because those have uh, the growth plate uh, is uh, present there. So it is, uh, when you use that, it's more, it makes more sense. Uh, but generally, we use the, those names, the head, neck, shaft, condyle type of names. For example, if, there, if we have fracture in the distal metaphysis of the femur or fracture in the inferior third of the shaft of the femur. So we can use either of those, either distal metaphysis or the inferior third of the shaft of the femur. And after you mention the fracture uh, type or the fracture shape and location, now you mention the displacement of the fracture. So you describe the displacement of the distal fragment in relation to the proximal fragment. Always remember, remember this, distal fragment in relation to the proximal fragment. And we have four patterns of displace, displacement. Those include translation, also called shift, angulation, tilt, rotation, shortening, and lengthening. And you mentioned the di direction of the displacement, which is anterior, posterior, medial, or lateral. And if, the, if there is no displacement, you say without displacement. So again, you start by mentioning the shape of the fracture, then you mention the fracture location, and after that, you mention the direction of the displacement and Finally, you mention the displacement. So let's explain each of the displacement patterns more. 
And let's start with the translation, which is also called shift. So it is shift of the fragments sideways, backward or forward. Uh, and here we have an example of a tibial bone that is fractured uh, in the mid, mid shaft tibial fracture, which is a transverse type. And we descri describe it as we mentioned earlier. So we start by the shape of the fracture. So it's a transverse fracture in the mid shaft of the tibia and with a translation or lateral translation of the distal fragment. So a transversal fracture of the mid shaft of the tibia with lateral translation of the distal fragment. And we, here we have an X-ray film of a tibial fracture and also fibular fracture, commutative type of fracture. So when we, when we describe it, we mention the uh, fracture shape, which is commutative type of fracture in the mid shaft of the tibia with lateral displacement of the distal fragment. The second pattern of displacement is the angulation, which is also called tilt, and the bone fragments would be tilted in relation to each other. The angle between them is less or more than normal. And here we have an example of also a tibia fracture. It is a transverse tibial fracture in the mid shaft of the tibia with a medial angulation of the uh, distal fragment. So it's a transverse medial mid shaft tibial fracture with medial angulation of the distal fragment. Or you can use this type of uh, description, which is mid shaft tibial fracture with the apex pointing laterally. So the apex here is pointing laterally. And here we have an example of uh, a humerus fracture. It's also a transverse type of fracture in the mid shaft of the humerus with a medial angulation of the distal fragment. The third pattern of displacement is the rotation. And here the fragments rotated around its longitudinal axis in relation to the other fragment. And sometimes it can't be detected on X-ray. Uh, so be attentive when doing physical exam. Here we have an example, so it's also a transverse mid shaft tibial fracture with the rotation of the distal fragment. The fourth type of displacement is the shortening, and here we have an overlapping of the fragments due to the muscle pull, or due to the fracturing force also. So here we have, we might have muscle insertions here and here, theoretically speaking, and those muscles would pull the distal fragment of the fracture into, uh, into the other fragment and it would lead to shortening, uh, which is overlapping of the fragments. And we describe it like that, transverse mid shaft tibial fracture with shortening of the bone due to overlapping of the fragments. And here we have an example of the uh, femoral fracture, it's also a transverse type. Uh, and it's a mid shaft, so a transverse mid shaft femoral fracture with shortening of the femur bone. The final pattern is the lengthening, which is the opposite of the shortening. Here, the bone fragments get further away from each other. And here we have an example, also transverse mid shaft tibial fracture with lengthening of the bone. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please, if you like this content, uh, like the videos you watch and subscribe. And if you want to support more, you can by subscribing to the Patreon link provided in the description of this video. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next videos. Peace.